Hi, everybody. Um, just going to give it a couple minutes for people to sign on, and then we'll get started. Oh, and you don't care if I record this, right? Okay. I didn't think so. All right, just in lieu of everyone's time, I will go ahead and start. My name is Danielle Angelari. I'm the executive director of NAMI Northern Illinois which for those of you who don't know, we are an affiliate of the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and we serve Winnebago, Boone, and the surrounding counties in our region. Um, before introducing our presenter this evening, I'd like to make you aware of some of our upcoming events. Tuesday, March 15th at noon, we will be hosting our next community education webinar via Zoom with Kevin Polkey, who will discuss the men's mental health crisis and the importance of breaking the barriers to mental health care for men. Saturday, March 26th from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Rockford Public Library Nordloft Theater will be hosting a screening of the film adaptation of the Tony and Grammy award-winning musical, Dear Evan Hansen. Um, at the end of the screening, we will hold a panel discussion with local mental health providers to unpack the movie and provide support. Um, <clears throat> all guests will receive free entry, popcorn, a beverage, and discount coupons from our friends at Supporting Restaurants for Dinner following the event. So if you know of any families that could use this opportunity as a tool for opening that conversation about mental illness and suicide with their teens, please do share. For anyone with an adult loved one living with a mental illness, registration is open for our family to family classes, both in English and in Spanish. They'll be starting this spring. It's coming up quick. Research shows that this program significantly improves the coping and problem solving abilities of people closest to a person living with a mental health condition. And finally, we're in the weeds of planning our annual event, Mulligans for Mental Illness, which will be held Monday, June 6th at Forest Hills Country Club. Um, there are still sponsorship opportunities as well as spots for golfers and the after hours party left open. And this is your invite to join us. I will follow up with all that information um, in an email tomorrow morning, likely, um, but now on to our presentation. I'm joined tonight by my friend Joan Lodge, who is a licensed clinical social worker, as well as the grant management administrator and community liaison for Rosecrans Inc. Joan has worked in the behavioral health field for over 30 years and holds a master's in social work from Aurora University. She has served as Associate Director of Janet Waddles, Director of Emergency and Community-Based Services, and Administrator of Adult Community Mental Health for Rosecrans. She currently is serving as Project Director for the Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinic for Rosecrans. She was named Social Worker of the Year from the National Association of Social Workers, Illinois, James Adams District in 2013, as well as received nominations for the YWCA Women of Achievement and NAMI Making a Difference Awards. And she currently has leadership roles in a lot of different capacities, such as the Illinois Justice Mental Health Task Force, Illinois Mental Health Planning and Advisory Council, the Boone County Behavioral Health Task Force. She is our very own NAMI Northern Illinois board member and the Winnebago County's Family Violence Coordinated Council. Joan is here to talk to us about the new 988 dialing code that will write route callers to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people and was the 10th leading cause of death in the nation in 2019, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In 2019, one death by suicide happened almost every 11 minutes in the U.S. The 988 code is the first step towards transforming crisis care in this country. Um, welcome, Joan, and I will hand it over to you. And for the audience, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box and we'll facilitate them at the end of the presentation. Thank you again. Danielle, thank you for that introduction. And I'm really pleased and happy to be here today. 
really going to talk about, and it is literally a roadmap of 988. I also want to preface the presentation was created with information that I obtained by being on many task force, including the 988 stakeholder meetings, Department of Mental Health Learning Collaborative um, as part of their crisis care system, and quite a lot of reading. This is not uh, the design of Rosecrans, or it is the, the opinions of Rosecrans. So why is 988 needed? Danielle started off my presentation off this, this evening talking about some statistics. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people and was the 10th leading cause of death in the nation in 2019. According to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention data, in 2019, one death by suicide happened almost every 11 minutes in the United States. Approximately one in five people above the age of 12 has a mental health condition in the United States. Suicide is the leading cause of death among young people and the 10th leading cause of death overall. More Americans died from mental health crises and substance abuse in 2018 alone than have died in combat in every war combined since World War II. The crisis continuum. So what this means is we just talked about statistics about suicide, but we can change it. Suicide is preventable and mental health conditions are treatable. More than ever, this is the time to update the behavioral health system to meet the needs of people in crisis and emotional distress. But the crisis con care continuing must evolve must evolve to, do, to better meet needs of people in crisis and distress, as well as prepare for the future mental health impacts of our, our previous pandemic and other events that may have occurred, such as in our community, the opioid crisis. There must be a shift from the existing behavioral health crisis continuum toward a system that is inclusive, person-centered, and cross-collaborative. So you might be asking yourself, well, that sounds great, but how? Well, you ask the experts. Vibrant Emotional Health and a Mental Health America affiliate and an administrator of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline has provided recommendations and defined the vision and mission for 988. The vision it serves 988 will serve as Americans' mental health safety net. We will reduce suicides and mental health crises and provide a pathway, a pathway to well being. The mission everyone in the United States and its territories will have immediate access to effective suicide prevention, crisis services, and behavioral health care through 988. What's really important here is everyone. So what this hope is for everyone in the United States is everyone, anywhere, anytime. But why is it needed now? That could be a big question. Why, why just can't we just do what we normally do with the, the current status quo? Well, according to a 2019 report by the Treatment Advice Advocacy Center, an average of 10% of law enforcement agencies' total budgets and 20% of law enforcement's time was spent responding to and transporting individuals with mental illness. Fully implemented, now I highlighted fully implemented, the 988 system will reduce available emergency department or hospital admissions for people in crisis and avoid traumatic engagement with the criminal justice system. Um, I also took the liberty to um, have, there's a video uh, that's, let's watch that now, uh, Danielle. It's, it's called, the video is called The Promise of 988. One moment, let me pull it up for you. Imagine for a moment that a fire breaks out in your home 
and in this reality, 911 doesn't exist. You might call the fire department directly, but they're not equipped to come to your location and only put out fires at the fire station. And the only people that will come to you in the community are the police, who though well-intentioned, are meant to provide a very different type of public service. This lack of a fire-specific response seems ridiculous, right? Of course we should have targeted services to respond to life-threatening emergencies, whether that's fire, law enforcement, or physical health. However, in many communities across America, life-threatening mental health and substance use crises are treated as an afterthought, receiving a response that's not specific to their unique needs. A 911 call dispatches the police, who most often bring the patient to a medical emergency room or jail or allow them to remain in the community but without assessment, treatment, or support. We have a patchwork system, made up of elements designed for other purposes, that doesn't have the capacity to treat the most vulnerable in our communities, even though an estimated 20 to 25,000 individuals in crisis go to emergency departments every day in the U.S. So how can we improve? The only solution to delivering crisis care worthy of our communities is to build a structure specifically for mental health, substance use, and suicidal crisis that is on par with other emergency systems like we do for medical, fire, and law enforcement. By integrating three core elements, we can replace the patchwork fabric of our crisis care and develop a true safety net that can serve everyone, everywhere, every time. And in the process, we can reallocate wasted financial resources to places where they can have a deep community impact. It starts with regional or statewide crisis call hubs. Call, text, and chat lines staffed by trained professionals who answer the call every time and direct people to the level of care they need. The onset of 988 is a great start. However, it will need to be supported by technology that empowers 988 to become an air traffic control for mental health and substance use crisis enabling real-time coordination across the care spectrum. But a comprehensive crisis network cannot be built with only crisis call hubs. Additional services are necessary to ensure that a unified system of care is available when and how people need it. Services like mobile crisis outreach teams, 24-7 non-law enforcement mobile teams that go out in the community and deliver care to people wherever they are. This lessens the burden on law enforcement during situations where they're not needed and eliminates the anxiety people feel when a uniformed officer knocks on their door. And facility-based crisis receiving and short-term stabilization. Facilities that say yes to every person that walks through the door, regardless of their level of need, allowing them to bypass the medical emergency departments. This not only provides specialized care to these individuals with less waiting, it also enables medical emergency departments to focus on the patients they're trained to serve while drastically reducing wall time for police when transportation by police is warranted. With these core elements in place, mental and substance use healthcare can move out of the shadows and into the mainstream. Together, we can build an unbroken system of care that connects patients from the point of crisis to the level of care that's right for them. To learn more, visit crisisnow.com. You're still muted, John. Okay. Thanks for that, Danielle. Appreciate it. Okay, back on track. Okay. So, might sound like a lot of work. Or many of you might be thinking, oh, is this too good to be true? But there really is a plan. And some of the steps have already happened. This roadmap is really part of a process. So in July of 2020, the Federal Communications Commission already had designated 988 as the new three-digit number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. 
So 988 will be the direct line to those trained counselors. And this will open the door for millions of Americans to seek the help they need while sending the message to the country that healing, hope, and help are happening every day. In 2020, the volume will be staggering, by the way. The Lifeline received nearly 2.4 million calls. With an easy to remember dial number like 988, the Lifeline hopes to reach, reach many more people in emotional crisis. So we've identified that our crisis care system needs to be recreated. The bigger question is, well, how do we pay for it? So the National Suicide Lifeline provides 24-7, 365 free and confidential emotional support to people in suicide crisis or emotional distress among the, among the United States. Lifeline is administered by the nonprofit organization called Vibrant. We saw their vision and mission earlier. Well, Vibrant is funded by SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Supporting the 988 dialing code was a key part of the Biden-Harris administration. They focused on ensuring that those in crisis have someone to call, someone to respond, and somewhere to go. The 988 code is a first step towards transforming crisis care in this country, creating a universal entry point to needed crisis services in line with access to other emergency medical services. With funds from the Biden-Harris administration and additional funds from the American Rescue Plan, SAMHSA's $282 million investment with the support of 988 efforts across the county to shore, country to shore up, scale up, and staff up our crisis care continuum for America. This is a crucial time for individuals who experience a behavioral health crisis. Individuals in crisis are being heard and being supported. So what is it really and how will it help? So again, it's that 988 direct line to a trained National Suicide Prevention Lifeline counselor. The Lifeline is effective in reducing suicidal and emotional distress from individuals. Evaluations and caller feedback report that. They report that it's effective in reducing caller distress and suicidality and helps tens of thousands of people get through crises every day. Since launching in 2005, so they have some experience, right? The, the lifeline call volume has increased approximately 15, excuse me, 14% annually. In 2005, the first year of the lifeline, it answered over 46,000 calls. In 2020, nearly 2.4 million calls. The lifeline is a network of over 180 accredited crisis call centers. All the call centers are accredited. They provide extensive training in crisis intervention, suicide prevention, and best practices. So in four months, by July of 2022, all telecommunication companies will have to make the necessary changes so individuals can access this 988 digit dialing code. 988 lifeline counselors will be ready and available to take those calls. They're highly trained to assist people in emotional distress or suicidal crisis. In fact, based on data provided by lifeline call centers, approximately 98% of those lifeline calls do not require an emergency response. What that means is that the individual's call or distress can be listened, can be heard, and a safety plan can be created while on the phone with that crisis line counselor. However, of the 2% of calls that do, that do require that emergency response, over 60% of those calls are the ones where there needs to be an emergency response. Needed to be able to have an immediate emergency spot response from where that person is located within their catchment area. The Department of Mental Health um, predicts that 70 to 90% of the callers who call 988 can have their needs or their distress be met over the phone. So 988 is the new lifeline number 
It holds the promise of an equitable healthcare response. Equitable means anytime, anywhere for anyone. Doesn't matter if you have funding, doesn't matter if you have private insurance or you have no insurance. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. It, has, it holds the promise of better outcomes as people receive services and supports they need to remain in their communities and thrive. This promise can be fulfilled if adequate resources are available to accommodate increased call, chat, text volume. It's a way of the future. As well as the continuum of crisis care services that can stem or what can be needed based on that 988 call interaction. Crisis care services are more impactful when they also include and, are, and are informed by individuals with similar and diverse backgrounds or populations of focus, which includes individuals who have lived experience, who are trained in response and can respond in empowering and culturally responsive manner. So how do we how do we pull this all off? How do we make sure that we in this crisis continuum we are providing the best care possible? Well, we utilize many times best practices or evidence-based practices. But SAMHSA again, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration developed best practices for crisis continuum. And they have been adapted <clears throat> by this crisis care continuum. So these, these best practices are six core prim principles, really high level addressing recovery needs or the recovery needs of the person that is in crisis, a sig significant role for per persons with lived experience, a trauma-informed care approach, utilization of zero suicide, suicide safer care, safety and security protocols for staff and clients who are in crisis, and a crisis response partnership with local law enforcement, dispatch, and emergency medical services. This is all part of that roadmap of the crisis care continuum. A behavioral health crisis needs a behavioral health response. Crisis call centers, well now, so remember we talked about those individuals who would um, not be able to get their needs adequately met just by the phone call, that they would potentially need um, an emergency response. Well, the crisis call centers then would dispatch mobile crisis teams to the individuals who are in crisis versus how we've typically done things is that we would do a welfare check or we would call the police or call 911 to check on that individual. Now mobile crisis teams will be dispatched to that individuals wherever they're at. Maybe they're at a relative's home. Maybe they're in a park. Maybe they're at their own apartment. Um, and then what the, the intent of those mobile crisis teams is to um, process, develop a safety plan, and provide options for that individual, like crisis stabilization units, a living room program. Rosecrans has the Mulberry Center where they have the Triage Center and Crisis Residential and the Ware Center has um, our living room program that can provide additional supports. So really this crisis care continuum is building this sophisticated process for 988 call centers to coordinate with mobile teams 911 and first responders. This really is transforming our crisis care system and we're transferring mental health crisis calls to 988 to dispatch mobile crisis teams to the location of the individual. So again, I talked about Department of Mental Health predicts that 70 to 90 percent of the callers needs can be met over the phone by those crisis line call, um, counselors. But the, the callers who need that crisis response from those mobile crisis teams, those teams must be staffed by individuals with lived experience and partnered with the mental health professionals trained to provide crisis response. So what that means is there'll be two people that'll be going out on each of those calls to provide that emergency response, a mental health clinician 
and will be paired with what we're calling um, an engagement specialist or an individual with lived experience. Again, they will respond to wherever the person is, home, work, park, relatives home, and not restrict services to, to select locations for particular days and times. So this is 24 seven, 365. They'll also, these mobile crisis teams will also assist in resolving the crisis, creating a, a safety plan, and that that individual with lived experience will follow up with um, maybe the, the family members, provide resources on NAMI, or just wanting to make sure that that connection happens. So the intent again is, is to really connect those individuals in the least restrictive manner getting them the support and services that they need and coordinating um, those aftercare services after that um, crisis event. And only when and only if situations warrant transition to other locations, meaning an emergency department or utilization of uh, police and fire. But the roadmap continues. Uh, so the roadmap continues for 988 with House Bill 2784, which was signed uh, by Governor Pritzker in August of 2021. It is called in short CESA, the CESA Act. It, it stands for Community Emergency Services and Support Act. This was named after an individual. His name was Stefan Edward Watts. He was a 15 year old uh, who in 2012 lived in Calumet City and the police came to his home after the family called 911. The boy was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and was in their, the family's basement. According to the news reports, the 15-year-old had a knife. Police said he struck one of the officers in the forearm. The police then shot, shot him and the boy died. Stefan's family has said the knife he had in his hand was actually a butter knife. So House Bill 2784, SESA, is in order to promote and protect the health, safety, and the welfare of the public 911 system. And how, it, well, it's the welfare of the public by coordinating the 911 system with mobile crisis response teams. So this should be available. Um, there's a lot of coordination that still is happening. So what, would it, what it would look like is that 911 um, potentially can then decide where they need to dispatch that call. Maybe that call goes, because it's a behavioral health crisis, that goes to 988. But there's lots of work to be done. Again, this is a roadmap, it's the crisis care continuum. So the Department of Human Services, the Department of Mental Health is currently working with the Secretary's Office on the development, developing the statewide ad advisory committee as well as regional advisory committees within the 11 emergency medical response regions um, throughout the state of Illinois. This must be created to ensure successful implementation of the legislation or the House Bill Act. Committees are charged with coordination of emergency responses of 911, meaning police, emergency medical system, and, back, and dispatch with plans for addressing protocols, training standards, and what that mobile crisis response will look like. 911 emergency services dispatch must begin coordinating its activities with mobile, mobile crisis teams no later than January 1st of 2023. So here's a little bit of a recap. A 988 crisis line that is effectively resourced and promoted will be able to Connect a person in mental health crisis to a trained counselor who can address their immediate needs and help connect them to ongoing care. Reduce healthcare spending with more cost-effective early intervention. Reduce use of law enforcement, public health, and other safety resources. Meet the growing need for crisis intervention at scale. Help end stigma toward these, those seeking or accessing mental health care. When you've got a police, fire, or rescue emergency, you call 911. When you have an urgent mental health need, you'll call 988. And then I have some resources there. 
Thank you for all that information, Joan. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the chat and stuff, but I'd be happy to facilitate these questions for you. So number one, how do you figure out who's in a mental health crisis or maybe possibly homeless and looking for a place to stay? So the so if an individual calls 988, those would be questions that they that the suicide the counselors would be asking them. And, and the intent too is to is to really collaborate with other regions. So in the state of Illinois, they're gonna have resources available to them that like, so if a person is homeless, we know many, many times that's a crisis in itself, right? So that would be an appropriate 988 um, call and have resources that they can identify within where, wherever that individual is residing in their catchment area and provide that level of support. Um, will 988 be free to cell phone and track phone holders? If you know. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so there is some discussion on um, increased, because everybody has to pay for stuff, right? Um, so even though there, there's initiatives and there's funding being um, generated, through SAMHSA and our federal government, how do we sustain this over, over time? So what a cell phone user may have um, is additional charges that might potentially be part of their bill, or perhaps their, their community or their state decides to appropriate funds to, co to cover that, so they cover those expenses. Those details, um, quite frankly, haven't been completely figured out yet. Thank you. Um, do we know who will be the 988 team locally? Will the police be hiring social workers or, or will they contract with Rosecrans or someone who's already doing this type of support? So I think what's, what's really important to remember, even though um, Rosecrans has local um, crisis services, that how 988 works is that first initial contact is going to go to the National Suicide Lifeline um, because it, it's going to take a, a big staffing. Can you imagine 24-7, 365? Um, so that's where all of those original um, calls are going to be, be funneled through. Um, and then what, what will happen at that level of 988, let's say, again, emergency response. So the National Suicide Lifeline will contact Rosecrans to say, hey, I have somebody in Loves Park who needs, a, who needs somebody to go out and see them and, and we would dispatch. Um, we've had um, conversations uh, with our local EMS um, about how this will all shake out when, when 911 happens. And, and quite frankly, I think what it will what look like, it'll be almost like a decision tree. Um, um, depending on where, the, and, and at, the, at the 911 level, we'll have to kind of do their own um, kind of assessment, brief assessment to figure out, okay, is this is the, the life-threatening emergency or is this um, somebody who we feel is appropriate for 988 and, and dispatch uh, 988 directly from the 911 system. I'm not sure if I answered that question accurately, but a lot of moving parts. Um, I get to clarify on the first question that was asked. Um, do you think there's some sort of like screening they will do to ensure that it is a crisis someone's in before they respond? 988 or 911? 988. Or like, I mean, I feel like the suicide prevention lifeline as it stands right now, we'll talk to just about anybody that calls because they're probably not calling for no reason, correct? Right, and, and I think that's a fair question though, because you know what, what I believe, and I think this is how their training is, is that that crisis or whatever event is creating that emotional distress with that person, that's a crisis and that's real to them. And so you're you're right, Danielle. Is that they're 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 trained to you know respond and handle any single call. And if they feel it that they can't 
get to a safe place with that collar or if they need more, then they're gonna err on the side of caution, right? And then request a, you know, a mobile crisis team to dispatch, do more of that face-to-face -face engagement and assessment. Thank you. Um, how is the collaboration going? Is there a collaboration um, in motion with Rockford Police and Fire yet to respond to these calls? I've kind of um, had some informal conversations with the Rockford Fire because they're they're anxious, just like just like we are, because you know we hear all this stuff, but like what what where and how how do we all do it? And what and I reached out to the Department of Mental Health about that, and they're like, um, you need to pause <laughs> because. What happens behind the scenes again is that they're they're working with a statewide advisory committee and then a regional advisory committee, and they were just a few months ago just starting to form all of these committees to make some of those decisions. So for us to put in a system without having some of that direction um, or data or to support best practices. It, it might be just not, we're not ready to do that yet. Thank you. Good questions, everyone. Um, do we have any more out there? Is there a way for other community organizations to be involved with this program? Um, I think, uh, Thank you for that question. I think the best thing would be we have to get communication out about 988 is coming. Um, and I'll just give an example. So when um, you have, you know, your doctor's office or even um, some counselors will say, I'm, not, I'm currently out of the office if you have an emergency call 911. We have to start. Um, educating our community, our clients, our family members to starting in July, that this is another option of 988 is, is a viable option and needed to be an option versus um, calling 911 and, and expecting that uh, law enforcement response. So I think education is a big, huge piece that we all need to, to participate and be a part of. Um, like while we wait for more questions, do you don't mind if I share your PowerPoint with people tomorrow morning? Well, I don't mind if you want to share my PowerPoint at all. Okay, thank you. Um, I will also share the information um, I shared at the beginning of this session. Um, I do want to echo Mary's comment in there about our event tomorrow that I, or is it tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow NAMI's sponsoring a presentation on suicide prevention at the Cathedral of St. Peter at 5.30. It's free and open to the public. So you all are welcome to come to that. And I did want to mention, just kind of as a follow-up for this, the National Council is hosting a state and national initiatives for transforming crisis care through 988 webinar, Monday, March 14th um, at three o'clock central time. They will discuss the opportunities and challenges that everyone's been facing with 988. So if you're interested in that, I will share the link too. And I'm sure if you have any questions um, after this, feel free to reach out to me and I will get an answer from Joan, I think. <laughs> um, they do say before July, continue to call the National Suicide Lifeline phone number. Um, I'm not sure, I, I, I would just imagine that when July happens, if, if individuals still called the national, the 1-800 number, it would roll over and you're gonna get the same person, um, uh, meaning you're gonna get the national suicide hotline. But um, just, I, I think it's really gonna take a lot of, again, communication and just awareness of people to do that, to start using that and get that, you know, out there. Thank you. I appreciate all your time and your expertise. And everyone, if you could please just answer the two questions for me. 
um, for the poll. I would appreciate it before you sign off. And again, if you have any questions, um, I'm sending out that email tomorrow. So feel free to respond or give me a call. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Daniel. I appreciate it. Yes. Have a good night. Take care, everyone.